TV has picked up all this waste, and the American people now understand that the government is not a legitimate operation. You take the income tax. The thing that's very bothersome to me the most is that it's an absolute open violation of the Constitution. Income tax was prohibited, written by James Madison and George Mason, in the Constitution, saying there shall be no direct or capitation tax. We were the only country in the world without an income tax. That's why we grew. Then in 1913, Taft and Wilson said, well, we'll put one in, Congress passed it, but we're only going to tax the rich, and it was true. At that point, they only taxed the rich, 1% to 7%, at a very high level. You had to earn a fortune to get taxed. But whenever they say tax the rich, the average working man has to watch his pocketbook because it's just going to come down. All right. So this tax became legal, but Article 4 and Article 5 of the Constitution says that the government cannot seize, search or seize, your property without due process of law. But tomorrow morning, the IRS can call up your bank and take all the money out of your bank without even notifying you. They can seize your house without a judgment. They can levy, uh, take a lien on your house without a judgment. They can give you penalties without a court. As a matter of fact, the only tax court is called a tax court for adjudication. And the law there is that you're guilty until proven innocent. Yeah. The, only, the only court in the world, in America, which, yeah. for, all right, now, when you get a good politician like Fabricant, Ohio, tough guy, so he decided this is no good. I think you mean Trafficant. Trafficant, I'm sorry, <laughs> Trafficant. Trafficant got 263 signatures on his bill, and I spoke to him at length, which would change the tax court to the other courts, innocent until proven guilty. And it was all set to pass, so it had to go through Nancy Johnson's committee. She does oversight on IRS in the House. She's from Connecticut. Right. And I spoke to traffic, and I said, what happened? He said, she bottled it up. She killed it. He had 263 almost 50 more than, than needed for a majority, and she wouldn't let it out of committee. And the reason is because the IRS commissioners, uh, four of them, current and the previous three, testified and said, it'll make our collection very difficult. So traffic cab says, of course it'll make it difficult. You have to obey the Bill of Rights. Now, how have they gotten away with it? Well, they get away with it because the Supreme Court winks. The Supreme Court will not even permit a test in the court of the constitutionality of the collection methods of the IRS because they know it's unconstitutional. The only thing they'll permit is that you can sue an individual agent if you think that he broke the constitutional laws. And, right. and people have collective. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the party's just beginning. <clears throat> we'll let you uh, enjoy uh, visiting with Martin L. Gross. Right now, though, let's check in with uh, the number one double spam. The tax racket government extortion from A to Z. Okay, let's, uh, let's focus on this uh, subject of uh, ending the IRS. I had criticized Congressman Richard Archer of um, Texas because uh, he's not going along with John Kasich in uh, getting rid of uh, subsidies for the rich. But you said Dick Archer is committed to getting rid of the IRS. Is that true? That's right. He announced that he's going to get rid of the IRS. And uh, he doesn't know what to substitute it with, but he has a tendency towards the sales tax, which is my plan. And I did a lot of research with the numbers. And the national sales tax is easy, easy as pie. It means you'll never file with the United States government. You throw away your receipts. The amount of money you make is your business. And if you don't want to pay any taxes, you don't buy anything. And when you buy, you pay. Arch is going to announce this as a constitutional amendment. My guess is... 96, 97. By 2000, it'll be gone. Right now, I talked to a few of my friends in Congress. We have 100 votes. If tomorrow morning a bill comes up eliminating the IRS, we have 100 votes. We need 218. So it'll take about three years. Now, why do we do this? Well, number one, the incentives and lack of incentives to, buy, to, to what you, how you earn your money and how you do it are controlled by the IRS. You take capital gains. There are people who have right now $7 trillion dollars in assets that they want to get rid of. Really? Seven, Seven trillion dollars that they want to sell and do something else. My wife has a summer house. The thing is 50 years old. She wants to sell it. But if you sell it, you're going to pay 28% to the federal government and you get tax. So you're paying a, a third of the money and, and the capital gains on old houses is enormous. Doesn't she get a one-time exemption? No, that's only in a primary home. Oh, this is not a this primary home. This is a secondary home. home. Okay. Right. Now, she inherited it. Now, there are $7 trillion they estimate in locked-in assets, which if they, you could start to move, would create a giant boom. 
but nobody wants to pay 28%. So what happened, Ger Germany and Japan, for first 30 years after the war, had no capital gains tax. In the Far East now, which is going gangbusters, they have no capital gains tax. And the capital gains tax is one of the great rackets of America because you pay the tax when you lose money. You buy a stock in 1970 for 25 bucks, General Motors. Right now, to break even with inflation, let's say you put the money in a CD, you've got to make $75. Well, the stock is less than 50 bucks. So you sell it, but the government says, hey, you bought it for 25, you sold it for 50, you owe me $25 a share. So they've got every possible racket. They had this during the 70s where there was no in indexing of your income. So as the inflation went up, you went into a different bracket. You went from 15 to 20 to 25 percent, and you didn't earn any more money. So what happened was that right now the average family pays 40 percent of all of its money to the federal government, to FICA, to property taxes, to sales taxes, to bridge tolls, to every... The, the, I, I list 35 different taxes, and I put a little chapter on each telling you how we get screwed. We get screwed in the Triborough Bridge. We get screwed at the George Washington Bridge. And if you don't go over the George Washington Bridge, you have to swim home. There's no, way, there's no free passage. How do they do it? They keep raising the tariff, and people say, well, you've got to support the bridge. That's baloney. Right now, the Triborough Authority this year is making one-third of a billion dollars in profit. The George Washington's making $150 million in profit, and they give it to the subways. It goes to the Manhattan, to the, to the subway system of New York City, and to the path trains. So the guy in the car who has no escape unless he drives off the bridge. It's the old-fashioned highwayman. And every, everything that they touch is corrupt. Social security tax. Tax comes in, 400 billion comes in a year, but they only spend 325. What happens to the 75 billion? Goes into the general fund for the president's salary, for the welfare checks, for the farm subsidies? Well, it's not supposed to go in the general fund. Well, the thing is, it's allowed to by law, and they've done it every single year since 1983. They raised the FICA taxes to get a surplus, $2 trillion for the baby boomers. So instead of putting it in the bank, they spend every nickel of it. This Last year they spent $58 billion. This year they're spending about close to $70 billion. And there's no law stopping it because Franklin Roosevelt did not segregate the money and the so-called Social Security Fund is a, a fiction. So right now, as of... As of last week, they owed $413 billion to Social Security, and Social Security can never get it back because it's part of the $4.9, $4.8 trillion national debt. And all they've got is pieces of worthless paper, and the only way they can redeem the paper in 2020 for the baby boomers is to go out and borrow the money. So they raise the taxes to get the surplus. They spent the surplus, then they got to go back and borrow to get another surplus to spend again. And that's one of the reasons we're bankrupt. And the baby boomers are going to have absolutely nothing there unless they change the system. And in my book, I change the whole system. Uh, Newt Gingrich has uh, made uh, many statements very similar to what you're saying. And uh, he says, if we don't do something about reforming Medicare, uh, early part of the 21st century, maybe uh, by the year 2002, what have you, it's gone. Uh, ARP. What do you think of ARP, by the way? Well, ARP was a good organization, but then it was uh, taken over, by and large, by the big government people. And so that they have uh, not just the concern for the age, they also have concern for big government. And uh, therefore, it's a dangerous organization. The problem with Social Security is that the money has never been invested. The FICA money, 7.65% of the employee, 765 by the employer, and... 13.3 from the self-employed. Can you imagine the self-employed person? Let's say he's in a 28% normal bracket. Then he's got 13.3. He's 41 and a half. And then with the others, the, so that what happens is you create what we call the cash economy, the underground sneaky criminal economy. Yeah where everybody wants cash, because if they declare it, they can't eat. It's a question of, do I give it to the federal government, or do I eat tonight? You know, the more I think about it, the more I realize we would be better off with a value-added tax. But you know what? We'll never be able to get it because the media has poisoned the mind of the average American by virtue of saying it's unfair, it's a tax that the rich will like, and you poor people won't like it. I, 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 I uh, anticipated them. So my poor people pay less in my plan than they pay now. And I'll tell you how they do it. Number one, national sales tax. A little different than the VAT. The VAT is hidden. It's a sales tax that's hidden 
with the manufacturer. My, my thing is right across the counter. You buy a suit for 200 bucks, you pay 13.5% federal sales tax, and you never pay any income tax. Of course, an extra 27 bucks is not going to kill you at that moment, but what will make you very happy is not to have a nickel taken out of your paycheck. Uh, now, what I do for the poor is very simple. I exempt food, housing, and medical care. You don't pay a nickel on that. No one does. Then, if you still are paying... Wait, wait, more, no, no tax of any kind on food, food housing, or medical, medical care. Medical care, right. That leaves, right now, the Nash, 1994, the uh, gross domestic product was $6.7 trillion. After I take that out and I take some business equipment out, I got 4.1 trillion left that's taxable. That's things you buy and services, except for medical services. Now, that brings in enough to take care of the federal government at the present level, but I can lower the 13.5% as we go along as we squeeze this, this, this miserable, ridiculous, bloated government. So we'll get down below. New York, Connecticut, and New Jersey... I call it the Bermuda Triangle of taxation because the money disappears, are the three highest tax states in the United States. The average American pays taxes and not a nickel for himself until May 6th each year. That is, you work until May 6th for the government, federal, state, etc. New York and Connecticut is May 24th, and New Jersey is May 18th, number one, two, and three. And the reason, of course, is that we've got the biggest welfare rolls and the biggest boondoggles and the biggest pork and the biggest everything. But under the sales tax, you keep your money and you pay when you buy. It's virtually painless. The only time it's really painful is a car because the house is, house is exempt. So you buy a car for 20000 you're going to pay 2700 in tax. It's not going to kill you. But meanwhile... You won't go to jail, you won't have your house taken, you won't get your bank levied, you won't get penalties, you won't get interest, you won't get audited, because there's no IRS there. The IRS is gone forever from the face of the earth. You know, a guy who was then the chairman of the National Democrat Party kept saying how unfair this would be. He's for fairness, he's for fairness, he's for fairness. He's the same guy now accused of of uh, taking in uh, bribe money at least $500,000. I'm talking about the Commerce Secretary, Ron Brown. You know, the word fairness is very interesting. Let's say we, we were to keep the present system, God forbid. Guy makes 50000 pays taxes. Man makes 100000 You'd expect the man to make 100000 to pay twice as much. That's fair, right? He yeah. pays three times as much. They invented the word fair, which really means unfair. They took an unfair situation and called it fair. Now, how do they get away with it? They get away with it because the American people trust the federal government from way back, from Harry Truman, from FDR, from World War II, from JFK. The federal government's a racket. It's, a, it's an organized, I, I used to call it the Anglo Mafia. But it's not the Anglo Mafia now because we got Jews, Italians, blacks, we got everybody in on the racket. Now, the racket is so bad, that, that's why I wrote 40 chapters, because each one produces the racket. Connecticut... You buy a car, you pay sales tax, which is not deductible. Then you pay a license tax. And then every year you get a bill for the privilege of driving your car. It's called a personal property tax. It runs two to three hundred dollars. In Bridgeport it runs a thousand dollars on a new car. And if you don't pay the privilege tax of driving, they take your car away. They don't seize the car, they don't give you the license. Because the motor vehicle and the tax department work together. This racket works in Florida. They charge, they, they tax you for stocks and bonds you have in your closet. Uh -huh. Not for selling them, for having them. So every place has got another racket going, and the result is 40% of all the money created in America, $2.6 trillion goes to taxes. And it's, it's probably twice as much as it should be. All right, we're, uh, we're going to focus on that and much more. And ladies and gentlemen, you want to join in? Okay. One of the most important men in America today, if only people would listen to him. I know you're listening. Uh, let's see, you all set to go to the phones? You have your hearing... Uh, My hearing aid. The, uh, you have your earphones on? Okay, here we go. Biff from Queens. Uh, thank you, Bob. Uh, two points I'd like to make. Mr. Gross, I wonder if people really understand what you just said about the Social Security Trust Fund income tax. And what's worse... It's only taxing people up to $56,000. All the so-called rich tax cutters are getting the deficit paid for without them paying their equal percentage of their incomes. 
And two, while Senator Domenici is doing a great job reducing the deficit, how does he get away with saying it's a balanced budget when, in effect, he'll be borrowing $680 billion from the Social Security Trust Fund Income Tax, and he calls it a balanced budget? Yeah, that, that's one of the big rackets. When the budget is balanced in 2002, it'll have a deficit of 80 to $90 billion because that's the amount of money they steal. It's not borrow. It's really steal from the Social Security because there's no way to pay it back. It's part of the $4.9 trillion debt. So that, now, had we have a real Social Security system, which we don't, think of this. This, this station, the employees of the city or the state, IBM, have pension plans. The money comes in on Monday, it gets invested on Tuesday, and the money grows. Social Security comes in on Monday, the government takes 17% vigorish, they steal 17% on Tuesday, then they send the rest of it back. It's never been invested for one day. The investment in Treasury bonds is a fake because it's part of the debt. Now, in little Chile, now Chile's no big country, 10 years ago they, quote, privatized their Social Security. I call it individualized. That is, you have a number, and the money is in your account, compulsory, and you choose one of 12 investment funds to invest the money in. If the fund goes bankrupt, the government has another little extra insurance pool, so you get the minimum. And in the last 10 years, Chile has produced 14% gain per year on the Social Security, and we've lost since 1982 16 17% per year. So about 25 years from now, when you go on a cruise ship, They'll all be old Chileans. They won't be the Americans because they won't have any money. The baby boomers are getting totally screwed. So somebody's got to face the reality that you've got to invest money in order to have it grow. And if you invest it in an internal treasury bond, an external negotiable treasury bond that a guy in Japan buys, he can sell. You can sell this treasury bond because it's a fake piece of paper. It's called a certificate of indebtedness. To make it real money, you've got to go out and borrow again or raise the taxes. Now, we're talking about raising the FICA taxes to 20%. That means a self-employed guy will be paying about 30% just in FICA. Uh, the self-employed thing is ridiculous. Why should a self-employed person pay like he's an employer and employee? He's one man. So Social Security has got to change. The only way is the following. This year, there'll be about 65, 70 billion surplus. Invest even that surplus in IBM stock, Fannie Mae, Ginnie Mae. Those government-guaranteed organizations have grown 18% per year in the last 20 years. They make a fortune in government. Sally Mae, Freddie Mac, all of the uh, Ginny Mae. But we don't do that. We don't do that. Why? Because the government does not have, and this is the key to everything I'm saying, the government does not have your best interests at heart. It's the only government in the world. Some governments screw up, but they have their best interests of the people, not this government. They do not have your best interests at heart. Their interests are all personal, getting reelected, keeping themselves ignorant. And I must tell you, I've testified five times before Congress. They're all charming gentlemen. And they are very intelligent in the outside world. Their knowledge of government is zilch, absolute zilch. I have to reveal to them that the money is not properly invested and that they're taking it. All right, let's uh, try John on the line from uh, New York. Hello, John. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Gross, Mr. Grant. Yes, Mr. Sir. Gross, my one concern about an over-the-counter tax as opposed to a VAT tax is that it will be such a windfall for dishonest retailers. If you give them 14%, that they can hold, they're not going to claim it. Any cash sale, they're just not going to claim it to the government. They're just going to pocket it. I've worked for retailers, and I, I know they all do it. Well, you're saying is that they're going to evade the tax. Well, tax evasion is the oldest racket in the world. It's even older than taxes. Uh, right now, the, the IRS claims that uh, people evade $127 billion, uh, the underground economy. The real figure is closer to $200 billion. We only take in... 543 billion in individual IRS accounts. So you're talking about a large percentage of evasion. I presume that there'll be evasion. My guess is it'll be even less because everybody who comes to my house, carpenters, this guy, that guy, says cash. I said, no, I'll write your check. He said, no, I want dollar bills because evasion is not a, 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 an accident. It's the routine. So I think there'll be evasion in any case. But the cost of counter is very simple. Think of this. No audits, no filing, no liens, no penalties, no jail, no, no receipts. The only people who are going to get hurt by this are the CPAs. Now, my accountant doesn't know I'm even writing this book. If he hears me on this radio program, I'm finished. Because <laughs> it's going to put them out of business. Although I'm sure they can do other things. Go okay. On, go on welfare, sir. All right. All right, thanks. Okay, uh, let's try Fred here on the line on WABC. If you'd like to make a call. Fred is not there. Fred went to pay his taxes. <laughs> Here's uh, Bernard on the line. Hello, Bernard. 
Yes, hello, uh, Bob. Uh, Mr. Gross, uh, your uh, discussion to this afternoon is extremely uh, interesting. Uh, I'd like you to comment on uh, how the United States uh, fares uh, with the other Western nations as far as rank of taxation. Could you comment on that? Yes. First comment I'll make is that if you read the New York Times or the Washington Post, you'll read a series of lies on the comparative tax structure. They always show a big chart with Germany, etc., and America is near the bottom, which is an absolute lie for the simple reason that in European countries there's almost no property tax. The schools are paid for by the, generally by the federal government. There are very small federal, uh, very small state taxes where they have provinces, etc. All the money is up front in the federal, and when they, you read the newspaper chart, they only count our federal against their federal. The reality is that all the Western countries are approximately the same. The difference is the following, about 40% total. The difference is the following. In France, if you go to the hospital, it costs you 80 bucks for an appendectomy. If you, uh, you go to college in Germany, it costs you nothing. They subsidize the trains. The money in Europe comes from the middle class, goes back to the middle class. The money in America comes from the middle class, goes to the poor, goes to the rich, goes to the politicians, goes to the boondoggle. We, we, we're, the, we're the cash cow that gets screwed. So the, the tax structure is about the same. Now, what the Europeans do is they hide a lot of it as... Uh, Bob, point, Bob Graham pointed out in the VAT, that is, you go buy a dress for 200 bucks, there's about 30 bucks of hidden taxes, which they tax the manufacturers and the processors along the way. The problem with the VAT is the following. Every country that's put it in puts it on top of the regular taxes. So Denmark, England, etc., have doubled their VATs in the last 30 years because the people don't see it. They just see the price is going up, but what it does, of course, it kills the economy. There's only one answer to this tax structure, and that is eliminate the state income tax, eliminate the city income tax, eliminate the federal income tax. You put in the sales tax, and no state needs a state income tax. Seven states have no income tax. They make out very nicely. Florida has none. That's why people move to Florida. Texas has none. That's why they move to Texas. The people are voting with their feet. They're leaving Connecticut. Connecticut, in the last 10 years, is, uh, there's only two states, Rhode Island and Connecticut, have actually lost population. New York is about even. They go to Florida and Texas where there are no income tax. So you eliminate all of these taxes, you put in a sales tax, and then each politician fights with the other politician to lower the sales tax to make, get votes by lowering the, uh, sm making the government smaller. It's a, it's a win-win situation. But Travis, go ahead, Gene. Hi, Mr. Gross, Mr. Grant, good afternoon. How I haven't been so excited about listening to getting rid of the IRS since I can remember. How can we, as ordinary citizens, participate in this program and be supportive of this and helping this to come about? I great, tell you, great uh, question. Yeah, a way you can do it is this. Um, number one, join a few organizations. There's one called, in the back of my book, The Tax Racket, I have about 12 organizations involved in this uh, crusade. The most important is Citizens for Alternative Tax System. They're in Washington. There's addresses in there. I don't know, it's 15, 20 bucks a year. Good. And uh, number two, write your congressman because he's right now, for the first time in our history, thinking about it. And the reason he's thinking about it is because we're all so squeezed and we're going nowhere fast. We balanced the budget year 2002. We forget we balanced the budget at a very high level at the same tax rate. The taxes that they're talking about now... 500 bucks. I mean, that's all nonsense. I mean, it's, it's pleasant, but it's only going to reduce your taxes one or two percent. The, the real nut has to be a total change. And the, 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 the uh, national sales tax gives you a total change because then you determine your own tax rate. Write your congressman, join uh, the, uh, that organization and others listed in my book, and uh, become a, uh, a soldier. The reason we had the Republican victory in November is because of all the talk for three, four years, my writing, Bob talking, everybody talking, thinking about it. We get involved in this, it will happen. Tell us the name of your book again. I missed it earlier. Yeah, The Tax Racket, Government Extortion from A to Z. just came out today. This is my first program. Oh, wonderful. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. All right. Uh, his other books have been the uh, New York Times bestselling, have been on the New York Times bestselling list. The Government Racket, Washington Waste from A to Z. Now we have the tax racket, government extortion from A to Z. Uh, does the uh, publisher uh, send uh, these out to uh, the members of Congress, Martin? Yes. Um, the, um, it went with a letter from the publisher to every member of Congress, uh, ex-presidents, every governor in the United States. And I'm hoping that today is day one of a mass people's campaign 
to get rid of the IRS. Let me tell you what the IRS is doing. Five years ago, they had a plan where they, at random, picked 50,000 Americans and put them through hell. Not because their returns were bad, they were picked by a computer at random. They had to produce their bank accounts for years, their 1040s for years, line by line. It's called TCMP, supposedly voluntary. It's not voluntary at all. Then they wrote a report, 92, saying it was unfair to the taxpayer that we're going to drop it. This year, they not only didn't drop it, they've tripled it. 153,000 Americans will be chosen by computer, not just for this year's return, and not because of anything they did, just because their name exists in a computer. The, the IRS, I have horror stories in this book, because the IRS does not have to follow the Fourth and Fifth Amendment and can take your bank account if you owe the money, or if they think you owe the money. One guy committed suicide because he put down 70,000 business loss, his accountant suggested it, Government in order said, no, you can't do it. We'll send you a deficiency notice. You can fight it in tax court. He never got the deficiency notice. Why? Because they typed his address wrong, and uh, it never got there. Five years later, after the statute ran out, they went after him, seized all his property, and he killed himself. And then the, 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 the uh, wife, the widow, went to court, won, and the federal district court, not tax court, Federal District Court. You can go to the Federal District Court if you pay and you want it back. And the IRS came and their argument was the follow. The judge says, well, it was after the statute. They said, no, it was his obligation to remind the IRS that he might have owed the money. The IRS just sent out a $6.4 million bill to one of the relatives of the Pan Am uh, bombing. The only trouble is that the guy didn't get one nickel because they haven't settled yet. He read a newspaper article that they were going to settle, and they send the bills to the survivors of the Pan Am crash. It's a rogue organization. It's out of control. That's why Senator Pryor, good man, Democrat of Arkansas, passed the Taxpayer Bill of Rights in 1988, which did a little bit, but the, the IRS didn't go along properly, so now he has a new one up called Taxpayer Bill of Rights II, and that we need that passed to give the people, not full rights, because the taxpayer doesn't have full rights, but a little more than they have now so they can stop some of these seizures. Um, they can seize your house if the assistant director or director locally approves it, but any agent can seize your house if he thinks it's in, quote, jeopardy, meaning that you might skip with the house or sell the house. And it, there is nothing else in America like it. It's the only police state. The FBI doesn't have these rights. CIA, only the IRS. And, and the free people, free people shouldn't tolerate. Why did we invite ourselves to do this? Well, only because we didn't. It's because it snuck up on us. It snuck up on us a little at a time. Tax uh, racket, government extortion from A to Z, reform the tax system and close the IRS. It's... Uh, Actually, in soft cover, uh, Martin, uh, published by Ballantine Books, and uh, I, I would love to see every taxpayer in America, and every tax evader, for that matter, <laughs> have this book. How do they get it? It's, uh, it's in all the bookstores as of today. It's only 12 bucks, and what I have in the back is the gross tax test. For the first time, you'll see every tax you pay, 30 of them, 35, and a little chart, and you fill it out. I filled out my chart. And I was paying $4,000 more than I thought I was paying. I'm paying $3 and a half to the FCC per month per telephone line. I got three lines with the facts. Yeah, that's a right. So I'm paying 142 bucks to the FCC. Yeah, what is that for? God knows. They, they just, it's a, you got to hear this. The SEC said, let's put a little tax on stock to pay for the SEC, which costs about $300 million. So they put one penny on 300 buck transaction. They took in $600 million last year. What had happened to the $300 million? It didn't go for the SEC. It went to the general fund, the old slush fund. The gas tax that we pay, almost 50% goes in the slush fund. Nothing to do with roads. So every tax they have has a little racket attached to it. You have airline and airport taxes. 10% of your plane ticket is a tax for the airport trust fund, all of which, all of which surplus has been taken by the federal government and not used for airports. Bridge and highway tolls, capital gains tax, county taxes, dividend taxes, environmental taxes, excise taxes, federal income tax, gambling taxes, gasoline tax, hotel and travel taxes, income tax, state and city, inheritance taxes, junk food tax, license tax, luxury tax, marriage tax, options, stock and bond taxes, parking and garage taxes, penalties and interest, personal property tax, personal property intangible tax, 
Uh, it's just, it's, it's backbreaking. They, they get us, they get us everywhere we turn, everywhere we turn. You know, the, the interesting thing about the personal property tax is that in uh, Barnstable, Mass., and other towns in Massachusetts, they come into your house Why don't you stick and they tax your bit. couch. Let's uh, catch up with all the news, then we'll uh, come back with Martin Gross. You don't yes, have to be anywhere, do you? Okay. most listened to talk radio station. It's 6 o'clock. Uh, we uh, had left off when uh, you were trying to explain something, and I wanted you to have the time to do that. Uh, Martin Gross, if you've just uh, joined us, the author of The Tax Racket, Government Extortion from A to Z. It's a book uh, that uh, if your heart can stand it, you should read. You owe it to yourself to read it. I, I really believe, Martin, that if every American taxpayer read this book, we would have the change we need in no time. Well, I appreciate that. You know, I have a chapter on school taxes and another one on property taxes. That's the fastest growing tax in America. Here, the metropolitan area, property tax is the highest in the United States. New Jersey spends $10,000 per student per year to go to school, which is equal to a private school tuition. $10,000. Oh, my, oh, my. And yet, in Connecticut, is number three. They spend about 9000 And yet, New Jersey is 33rd in the SAT scores, and Connecticut is 36th mm. in the SAT. There's no connection between money. Utah, which spends th a little over 3000 per student, is up near the top. Yeah, yeah, but Utah doesn't have uh, Camden and uh, Newark. That's true. That's true. But I'll give you an example here of, of regular states, the top 10, who spend 20% less than the average, includes Minnesota, Illinois. Illinois has got a lot of inner city. Missouri, Tennessee. In uh, Irvington, New York, they spend... Six, the salary for the teachers averages sixty-seven thousand bucks. White Plains sixty thousand. The state of Connecticut over fifty thousand. This includes kids just coming into the system. They work one hundred and eighty days a year, and what happens is that the class sizes keep getting smaller because the teachers have grown four times as rapidly as the students over the last thirty years, and with pensions and raises. The school tax has now taken our area about 60% of all the property taxes. What America needs in every town is an anti-tax group mm. to take over the town. Forget the Republicans, forget the Democrats, anti-tax groups, put up candidates, take over the towns and start to work on the property taxes. Mine went up 28% last July. I mean, uh, the America can't afford its governments, cannot afford its governments. Too many. You know... But we have 85,000 governments in America. 85,000 is too many. Cities, counties. County is a racket. Connecticut has no counties. Abe Ribicoff, in 1960, signed his name on a bill which eliminated every county in Connecticut. Fairfield County, where I live, is just a name on a map. It doesn't exist. And, and cut out a whole branch of government. Didn't seem to help too much because our taxes are high. But if everybody got rid of the counties... What they did instead was they just drew, cut the state up into municipalities. But New York City, as you know, has five different counties and borough presidents and bureaucrats. There isn't any area of the tax business where they don't give it to the taxpayer because uh, it's, it's a horrible thing to say, but the average politician doesn't give a damn. Now, and uh, another reason uh, they resist uh, either a sales tax or a flat tax is they won't have the control that they have. I mean, one year they say, yeah, let's give a boondoggle to the building industry, give them tax abatement. The next year they want to give a boondoggle to uh, another group. They would lose that control. Totally. They wouldn't be able to have any tax breaks because there are no taxes except what you pay at the sales tax. And, and the, uh, they would, we would eliminate with the national sales tax, we eliminate the inheritance tax. The inheritance tax has got a giant industry of insurance men, lawyers, accountants, trust people, and they get three quarters of 1% of the budget total, only $11 billion out of all the inheritance tax, and it costs almost as much to collect it. I get rid of the inheritance tax. I get, I get rid of the capital gains tax. Why? Because you don't pay a tax on what you bought and sold because it's nobody's business from now on, if we do this, what you make. 
But you know, when you, you're saying this, and it's all blasphemy to the socialists out there who really want taxes to stay the way they are and even increase them because that's how they transfer your money and my money to somebody else. The biggest transfer racket going is Bill Clinton's earned income tax racket. I have a chapter showing how they screw the East and the North for the poor states. Here's what they do. It started out that if you made the poverty level or less, they gave you a few bucks. It was $400 to help you pay Social Security. That's not bad at all. It's a good idea. But whenever the government starts something, they go bananas. It's now up to $28 billion a year. You get a check from the IRS, your money, my money, everybody's money. If you earn up to $27,000 with two kids, it went from, it went from 15000 to 27000 in a couple of years. So the Speaker of the House in Arkansas is eligible for tax welfare. And who is he getting the money from? From the guy who lives in Long Island who's making 40000 So it's a transfer of the money from New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, Michigan, Illinois, to Louisiana, Arkansas, where the cost of living is much less. 27000 in Arkansas is a decent salary. 27000 here, you're on a bread line. Mm. So the government, so this is the new racket of redistribution. It's, it's also geographic. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Martin Gross, I thank you for coming in. And uh, don't make it so long between visits next time. Oh, Matter of sure. fact, we should have a, uh, every now and then, uh, a reality check with Martin Gross uh, coming in and uh, talking about uh, the tax racket, government extortion from A to Z. They can get the book anywhere. It's out today. It's out today. It's in all the stores. Published by Ballantine Books. The best $12 investment you could possibly make. Well, thank you. Thank you so much.